Hello, my name is Cecilia Escamilla Greenwald, and we're joined today by many members of the community who have varying opinions on the the ballot initiative that's going to be on the October 7th special election ballot, and that is Proposition 54, also known as the Crino or Crinko Initiative. That is the Classification of Race, Ethnicity, and National Origin Initiative. The Classification of Race, uh, race Ethnicity, and National Origin Initiative um, aims to ban California state agencies from collecting data on race, ethnicity, color, or national origin. Many people believe that it's going to hurt um, a lot of research that is very valuable in making medical advances, in um, helping to fine tune the area of education, and uh, it's really going to take us steps back instead of helping us as a society collectively to move forward. Today we are very honored to have uh, um, such wonderful members of the community. First of all, we're going to be speaking with Mary Phillips. Mary is a community activist and a health care advocate. Mary Phillips has uh, been a resident of Davis for some time. And uh, Mary, if you could please share with us, how is it that Proposition 54, do you believe, is going to um, hurt in the field of medicine? Is it going to hurt the field of medicine or health care? Yeah, as a healthcare advocate, what I run into a lot is the issue of disparate disparities in healthcare. And um, this initiative would not provide us the data that we need to make that comparison. Generally, people who are not getting healthcare feel that healthcare somehow they're being disadvantaged. And um, one of the measurements is indeed to look at what data there is and how. Um, how, what the comparison is. So I'm very concerned that that kind of data won't be available if indeed uh, indeed uh, this initiative were to pass. Uh, our, our Constitution provides equal protections for all and therefore I'm very concerned about the constitutional denials that we would uh, uh, be infringing on our people. Um, I was just going through some newspaper articles just uh, this week, and there were at least two or three that talked about um, health care, in particular, and how different ethnic groups uh, face uh, conditions that are not prevalent in other ethnic groups. For example, here's one that says, uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal, August 25th. It says, uh, black women's cardiac care trails that of white women. Uh, the only way they could have got this data was to make some comparative data, and for that you need those kind of statistics. Here's another one that talks about, uh, this is from the New York Times, and uh, it's, it's on rising obesity in children, and it's uh, August 26th. It says, uh, in the last 20 years, those who work in the field say obesity has become the most prevalent chronic health problem among American children. And it goes on to say, that the ethnicity matters too. It says ethnicity matters too. Hispanic and African American children are disproportionately hard hit compared with white children. Now, if this initiative were to pass here in California, we wouldn't be able to get that kind of statistics made at present. So that's my primary concern. I'm also a, um, a civil rights officer and I handle discrimination complaints. For that, I need data. I need data when someone's complaining about discrimination is so to them to be able to compare what's going on elsewhere. So all of that's going to be there. Truly, we've got to have race in the equation, ethnicity and national origin in the equation if we're ever going to be a colorblind society. Thank you. Uh, what, what's very interesting about what you said, the, those statistics that you were giving and why race and ethnicity are needed, uh, for medical advancements and hone in on problems that may exist in, in certain ethnicities. Ward Connerly, uh, uh, which I did not mention, who is the, um, the key author, I believe, with other people, uh, he happens to be a regent and an African American himself, is, uh, he's the one that, that authored this bill and thinks it's a great, uh, a great proposition. And in the area of medicine, there are even some cancers 
that are more prevalent amongst white males, amongst Caucasian males. There are more some illnesses that are more prevalent amongst white females within a certain age group. So this is not just a quote-unquote color issue. Right. And that is something I really want to stress to people, that it's going to hurt us as a society, whether it's in the field of medicine, education, and so forth. So next we're going to be speaking with Leanne Friedman. Leanne, uh, you're very involved with the... Um, uh, you're a member and very involved with the Interfaith Forum uh, in Davis, Interfaith Forum on Racism. And uh, as a member of the uh, faith community, uh, what are your thoughts about Proposition 54? Well, I don't know if this is necessarily part of my faith, but it is certainly part of my philosophy of life that it is not the case that ignorance is bliss. And it seems to me that by saying we don't want to know what disparities there are based on uh, race or ethnic origin or other categories that are involved in this proposition. It's like saying we're putting blinders on. We don't want to know what's really out there because we're not a colorblind society. Um, we can, you know, when, when uh, Proposition 209, the anti-affirmative action proposition came along, people were talking about, well, we want a level playing field. There is not a level playing field. And saying, well, we'll pretend that there is, I don't think, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, doesn't bring that about. And this seems to be another step in that direction. Just saying, well, we'll pretend there are no differences. We, we don't want to know. We'll be ignorant and just go along as if everything's the same. So I just, I find that to be a really short-sighted stupid, if I may say so, way of approaching life. I don't approach my own life in terms of saying, I don't want to know what the problems are. And I, as a society, the more we do that, I think uh, the more the problems just overtake us. Thank you so much. That's a very interesting perspective. It's basically uh, shutting our eyes. If this were to pass, it would basically shut our eyes to the problems that exist and instead of helping us to take care of the problems, basically be putting our head in the sand. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much for those wonderful comments, Leanne. Uh, next, we are very honored to have with us um, Terry Turner, who is an educator, an artist, and a member of YCCAA, Yolo County Citizens for Affirmative Action. Uh, Terry, before you, and I don't know if I'm jump-starting here by saying this, but what's so wonderful is that you, back in uh, uh, 1965, three, 1963, um, participated, 65, 65, okay, I was, uh, yeah, I knew I it was around there. <laughs> you came to Davis in 63, so it was in 1965. You were a participant in a moment in history that many of us only read about and only dream about having been there um, and, and that that moment in history was uh, the bus ride from uh, Davis to Alabama um, to to march with uh, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, please please uh, share with us your thoughts on proposition 54 and maybe tie it into that that moment in history? Well, okay, I don't often think about this, but maybe I always think about it. Um, in the 50s, uh, as a young guy growing up, in, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is right on the border of Kentucky and Ohio. And, uh, we had, there was Jim Crow laws. Jim Crow laws which said that what we could do for work, if we could get jobs, couldn't, uh, where we could go, restaurants, and all those things. So uh, many people don't know much about that today or really understand it, but I experienced it. Um, thrown out of restaurants because of the color of my skin is a harsh reality and uh, makes you uh, think a lot about your position here on the earth with the people. But the thing is, Leanne talks about colorblind. So people said they were colorblind. They were actually blind to what was happening to us, 
people still today don't think that it really ever happened. And, and it did. Uh, there was no laws to support us, so we have laws that are blind to us as well at the time. Um, so we went out, we marched, and um, one of my heroes is a writer, Richard Wright, and he writes about being an invisible man. Of, of much of what I felt in my life, being totally invisible. Sometimes I still go through life feeling somewhat invisible, and uh, I, get, I guess somewhat depressed or despondent or whatever you might call it. But to be invisible is a terrible, terrible thing, to walk around the earth and no one sees you. Uh, or sees you just as one kind of person, a person you're a thief, or a person that uh, uh, obviously we're all diseased, or we're all rapists, or whatever it is. So, uh, most of which is not true, but uh, that's the that's how people do see you. So, in a sense, they still see you blindly. They don't see you as the person that's healthy and has the ability to any other person on this planet. And so therefore, it's hard to get jobs. I was looking at the Sacramento Observer today, and, and still, uh, as unemployment declines in the state, African Americans are being hit harder than anyone else. So, as usual, which means people are blind. Uh, I'm on these uh, committees in my job. I'm a professor at, for Yuba College, or Woodland Community College. And I sit on as affirmative action officers, or they call them diversity officers today because we can't use that word, it's still legal. But uh, so I sit there and they tell you, well, we can't really find anyone who is qualified, so how can we ever have an African American take a job like yours? I go, you mean I must be the most qualified guy in the nation since I'm the only one teaching here? So uh, it's really an intriguing position to be in. Um, so they would, if this Proposition 54 passed, they wouldn't even be able to collect. They would never really collect the data to get people hired like me. So uh, they'll just suggest that uh, we can't find you. You're all invisible, and it's all done. That gives them a really good excuse. Um, when I was hired in the 60s, uh, the late 60s, when I was hired at that college. Uh, we were anything but invisible. We were making lots of noise, and the community had to pay attention. So we did. So I got a good job. And today, I think if people want to get a job teaching and as a professor in the California Community College District, um, and you're African American, it's going to be kind of tough uh, because they don't see you. And I hear that constantly. So. Just look at the districts. Yeah. So it's really going to impact what um, the area of education looks like, uh, not only in, in education directly, services that are given to children or the type of education taught to children, but it sounds like the diversity of teaching staff, because we're not going to be able to collect data on how many uh, African American professors, how many uh, Caucasian women professors, or Asian American, to make sure that there's well, a proportionate teams, well. number of, of professors yeah. representing the students that they teach. That's, Ex that's exactly. very, yeah, it's or very interesting. One time I was told, uh, when, you know, I mean, there's also the, the, uh, the negative side of it. I think collecting data is a positive. But the negative side of it is one day I was told, well, we don't need to really look at African American instructors because we only have 2% of the population. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are only 2% of the population, so therefore we don't need to think about hiring you more. You are enough, in other words. So Thank you for I this. thought that's a really intriguing idea. <laughs> Thank you so much, Terry. Next we have Grace Kim. Uh, Grace Kim uh, is a longtime resident of Davis, a uh, former school teacher, and uh, is a member and founder of Davis Asians for Racial Equality. Grace, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, what, what are your opinions about Proposition 54 and how Proposition 54 would negatively impact us? Yes, these days I'm really struggling with this October 7 election. Unfortunately, this year, Californians are having an unnecessary election on both Proposition 54 and the governor's recall. It is a wasteful practice we have to go through. We will waste the time, energy, and the $60 million of 
taxpayers' money. The recall has become a joke, and the circus, and the mockery, undermining the authority and the sanctity of the democratic process and the principle. Proposition 54, the so-called racial privacy initiative, is a very deceptive title. It is an irresponsible and dangerous proposition. We remember that the same author, Mr. Ward Connolly, succeeded to take away affirmative action by calling it the Civil Rights Initiative. Again, a very confusing and a tricky title. Please do not be fooled by this title. Please vote no. The collection of race information by the government is necessary for tracking, investigating, and analyzing data regarding different races in California. Without this data, it would be impossible to expose hate crimes to prove discriminatory practices or racism to track and document the health and educational needs of different groups and to enforce the civil rights laws of this country. The passage of Proposition 54 would adversely impact the health care of ethnic minorities. It is because the statistical and the research data on the similarities and the differences in prevalence rates, symptom manifestations, and the response patterns to medical treatment of different disorders among different ethnic groups or subgroup will not be collected. Therefore, all medical data will be totally colorblind hereditary factors will be ignored. Proposition 54 is dangerous and uh, takes us back to the old days when minorities were seen but not heard and not counted. Please register to vote before September 22nd, get an absentee ballot, and vote no on the recall election and vote no on Proposition 54. Let us go forward and work together to improve the quality of life for all people, regardless of the different skin color and the different origin. Please vote no on Proposition 54 and no on the governor's recall. Thank you. Grace, that was wonderfully said. <laughs> and you touched on so many important issues there. Um, you also touched on uh, remembering to register to vote, if, uh, and that's especially important if people have gone through a name change right. or if they've moved, mm -hmm. and to uh, consider voting by absentee ballot uh, right. because the lines are expected to be longer this yes. year. That's right. um, it's not going to be as easy. They're not going to fit all of the names of the candidates, the 100 and now, I believe, 34, 35, 33. 35. But it's dropped, though, because some candidates have dropped out. Oh. So I think we're now at 133 or 134, mm -hmm. and it's going to take more than one card. Right. Um, so right. you got to look through mm -hmm. for your candidates. Mm -hmm. So they're telling people, if you're determined to go to the polls, bring your um, your your uh, I call it practice ballot <laughs> with you right. uh, and have it marked so you know where to look, or file for an absentee ballot. That's the best way to do it. And uh, thank you for those great comments. Um, Last and definitely not least, we're very honored to have with us a professor of sociology from UC Davis. Um, I was a sociology major and graduated from UCD, so <laughs> it's a wonderful field. We have with us uh, Professor Jim Kramer, professor of sociology. Thank you so much for joining us today. Your particular area of sociology, uh, if I remember correctly, it focuses on demographics, is that right? And so. Given that, how, what is your perception of Proposition 54, and how would that impact demographics in California, the research of demographics? Well, within, uh, I do a variety of different research dealing with population, mm -hmm. 
and I teach courses on uh, race and ethnicity, on immigration, on the nature of multicultural societies. So I, I deal with this topic uh, in all manner of ways. The, the proponents of this, the backers of Prop 54, claim that collecting data on race, ethnicity, and national origins uh, leads to conflict and obstructs the attainment of a colorblind society. Um, cert certainly the goal of achieving a colorblind society is, is, is laudable, but I don't understand at all how collecting this data will interfere with that. It's like saying uh, consulting a doctor and having medical tests is what causes having cancer. Um, collecting the data on things is, is, is not really what's, what's causing the underlying problems. We have a long history of difficulties dealing with race and ethnicity in this country, and people's perceptions about what progress we've made and, and are we close to a colorblind society or not, uh, people's perceptions differ enormously. Uh, public opinion polls consistently indicate that uh, in the last 10 years, something around 75% of white adults think that discrimination is a thing of the past and no longer exists. And something like a, a comparable percentage, something like 75% of people of color of, of different racial and ethnic groups uh, report that they experience or observe discriminatory acts on a daily basis. So we have huge disparities in perceptions about the nature of our society. <clears throat> and these perceptions lead to conflicts and, and, and controversies, debates, and so on. And there's no way of resolving that or knowing the truth of the matter without collecting data and analyzing the data. So let me give a couple of examples. In the area of housing, uh, many people report uh, that, that people of color experience discrimination in trying to rent properties and so on. Uh, there's been an enormous amount of research on that, and the research does in fact indicate that between 40 and 60 percent of the time when people of color are searching for apartments to rent, uh, they express experience some form of discrimination in terms of what information is given them, whether apartments are available, uh, what the down payment is, and so on, uh, compared to compared to whites. So, enormous amount of research, in fact, supports the idea that we're a long ways away from a colorblind society in the area of housing and rentals. Um, in another area, where, where I myself have done research, in the environmental area, uh, there's a lot of fear and, 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 and concern expressed that toxic waste sites are systematically located in neighborhoods of low income and, and people of color. And that causes uh, all sorts of community protest. It makes it very difficult to, uh, to solve our environmental problems because it's hard to locate then uh, toxic waste sites. In this particular instance, uh, a considerable amount of research lately has in fact indicated that there's no basis for this concern that to a, to a very considerable extent, toxic waste sites are distributed in a roughly random area and, and that they're, they are not systematically located uh, in uh, neighborhoods of, of people of color. Um, so it's indicating that the research can go both ways on this topic, that it can support the view that we're uh, approaching a colorblind society or that we're not. But without that research, people will, will be basing their views on, on different perceptions, and people have dramatically different perceptions. So we can't really resolve this. We can't really know what progress we're making uh, without having the data for doing the research. Thank you so much. That is so uh, 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 wonderfully and eloquently uh, uh, stated. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I'd like to give everybody an opportunity just to, um, in one sentence, summarize what, just, you don't you didn't have to, maybe some people have thoughts on it, some don't, just summarize, um, well, I was going to say summarize, summarize, summarize uh, uh, closing thoughts, but I've been told that we have limited time, so. 
uh, we won't do that. But I do want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, you've all shared uh, your input as members of the Davis community and as members um, of your various communities where you have uh, special areas of interest and research and involvement, the field of medicine, the field of, of, of uh, research and data collection, um, education in the community college arena, Davis Asians for Racial Equality, and also um, um, interfaith community. So we thank you all so much. And for those of you watching, please don't forget to register to vote. And remember to find more information, look for more information if you have more questions about Proposition 54 and the negative impacts. It's not a race issue, a race uh, uh, a collection of, of race uh, data or disparities. It's not just an issue that needs to be of great concern to minorities. It's an issue that needs to be of great concern to all of us if we are to move forward as a society. So we wish to thank you very much again for being here, and uh, please join us as we help to defeat Proposition 54. Mm -hmm. Good night.